the Air Force pulled fighter jets that hadn't flown in 10 years out of the Arizona desert and had them combat ready in 90 days. Aircraft that sat motionless under the sun with engines sealed and fuel tanks drained were flying combat missions within three months. The regeneration process making this possible saves taxpayers billions while maintaining combat capability adversaries can't match. The numbers reveal the scale of this operation. The 309th AMARG regenerates between 300 and 400 aircraft every year. These aren't simple maintenance checks on aircraft that flew last week. These are complete overhauls of airframes that have been in storage for years or even decades. Every regenerated aircraft must meet the exact same airworthiness standards as brand new production. No shortcuts, no reduced requirements, full combat capability. The timeline matters because military needs don't wait for convenient production schedules. When threats emerge requiring additional aircraft, waiting five years for new manufacturing doesn't work. Building an F-16 from scratch takes three to four years from order to delivery. A B-2 Spirit Bomber requires seven years. Even fast-tracked emergency production still measures in years. But pulling stored aircraft from Davis-Monthan and regenerating them takes 60 to 120 days on average. The difference between years and months changes what commanders can actually accomplish when crises develop. The Gulf War proved this capability under real operational pressure. When Iraq invaded Kuwait in August 1990, the Air Force needed more heavy bombers than the active fleet provided. Rather than accepting limitations or waiting years for production, they turned to stored B-52 Stratofortress bombers at davis Monthan. Aircraft that had been in preservation for years got pulled from storage, regenerated, and deployed to combat operations. Within four months, these bombers were flying missions over Iraq. No other military on Earth possesses this surge capability. The economic reality makes regeneration even more compelling. A new F-16 Fighting Falcon costs $63 million. Taking a stored F-16 from davis Monthan and regenerating it to combat-ready status costs between $2 and $5 million. Same capability, same performance standards, 1 20th the cost. When the Air Force needs to expand fighter capability, regeneration provides options that new production can't match on price or timeline. This economic advantage extends across all aircraft types. Recent A-10 Thunderbolt regenerations between 2022 and 2023 demonstrated current relevance. The Air Force had planned to retire the A-10 fleet, but operational demands in close air support missions changed that decision. Rather than accepting reduced capability or waiting for expensive new production, they regenerated stored A-10s. These aircraft returned to combat squadrons at a fraction of new production cost while maintaining the exact close air support capability commanders needed. The regeneration process begins long before any aircraft leaves its storage location. Engineers assess the specific airframe's condition through detailed records review. Every aircraft at davis Monthan has complete maintenance history documentation. Flight hours, component replacements, known issues, storage duration, everything gets analyzed to determine regeneration feasibility and required work scope. This assessment phase identifies which aircraft make the best candidates for regeneration based on condition and modification needs. Once an aircraft gets selected for regeneration, systematic work begins across every major system. The process follows strict sequences because certain work must complete before other work can begin. Starting randomly creates rework and delays. The 309th AMARG has refined these sequences through decades of experience across dozens of aircraft types. They know exactly which steps must happen in which order for maximum efficiency. The airframe itself receives intensive inspection first. Corrosion gets identified and treated. Even in Arizona's dry climate, some corrosion develops over years of storage. Inspection panels get opened to check internal structures. Load-bearing components receive particular attention because any structural compromise affects airworthiness. Flight control surfaces get examined for proper operation and wear. Landing gear undergoes complete inspection of struts, wheels, 
brakes, and hydraulic systems. Nothing gets assumed. Everything gets verified. Engine work represents the most complex regeneration challenge. Turbine engines can't sit idle for years, then start up without extensive preparation. The regeneration team removes engines from the aircraft and transports them to specialized shops for complete overhaul. Each engine gets torn down to individual components. Bearings get replaced regardless of apparent condition, because bearing failure in flight causes catastrophic engine loss. Seals throughout the engine receive renewal. Combustion sections get inspected for cracks or distortion. Turbine blades undergo detailed examination for any damage or wear. After teardown, inspection, and component replacement, engines get reassembled with new parts installed. The rebuilt engine then goes to test cells for extensive ground running. Technicians monitor thousands of parameters during test runs. Temperatures, pressures, vibrations, fuel flow, response to throttle inputs. Any anomalies mean additional teardown and inspection. Only after engines pass complete test cell evaluation do they get cleared for reinstallation on aircraft. Avionic systems present different challenges than mechanical components. Electronics don't benefit from sitting idle. Capacitors can degrade. Connections can corrode. But more significantly, avionics technology advances rapidly. Radar systems that represented cutting-edge capability when an aircraft entered storage may be obsolete by regeneration time. The 309th AMARG addresses this through complete avionics modernization during regeneration. Out come old radar systems, analog instruments, and outdated communications equipment. In Go Modern Digital Systems, updated displays, and current generation radios. The cockpit might look externally similar after regeneration, but internal capabilities match or exceed new production aircraft. GPS navigation replaces older systems. Data links allow information sharing with other platforms. Weapon systems get upgraded to employ current generation munitions. A regenerated F-16 emerges with the same combat systems as brand new Block 70 models. Hydraulic systems throughout the aircraft receive complete servicing. Old fluid gets drained and replaced. Seals get renewed. Actuators receive testing and overhaul. Hydraulics power flight controls, landing gear, and weapon systems. Any hydraulic failure in flight creates serious safety issues. The regeneration process ensures hydraulic systems meet new aircraft standards. Fuel systems require particularly thorough attention. Simply draining tanks before storage doesn't remove all fuel residue. Over time, residual fuel leaves deposits that can clog lines, valves, and pumps. The regeneration team flushes entire fuel systems multiple times with solvents to remove deposits. New fuel pumps and filters get installed. Fuel quantity measurement systems receive calibration. Fuel tanks get inspected internally for corrosion or contamination. Only completely clean fuel systems get cleared for service. Electrical systems present hidden complexity. Miles of wiring run through every aircraft. Connections can corrode. Insulation can crack. But you can't visually inspect every wire. The regeneration team uses sophisticated testing equipment to verify electrical system integrity. Resistance measurements identify corroded connections. Insulation testing finds compromised wiring. Circuit breakers and switches get tested for proper operation. Any electrical faults get traced and repaired before the aircraft can fly. Environmental control systems that provide cockpit pressurization and temperature control receive complete overhaul. These systems keep pilots alive and comfortable at high altitude. Compressors get rebuilt. Heat exchangers get cleaned and tested. Pressure seals receive replacement. Cabin pressure controls get calibrated. A regenerated aircraft must provide the same environmental protection as new production. The cockpit itself undergoes restoration. Seats get reupholstered or replaced. Canopies receive new seals and cleaning. Instruments get calibrated. Oxygen systems receive testing and servicing. Ejection seats undergo complete overhaul because pilot survival depends on perfect ejection seat operation. 
every explosive component in ejection systems gets replaced regardless of apparent condition. No one accepts risk with ejection seat reliability. After all systems receive overhaul and testing, the aircraft undergoes complete functional checks on the ground. Engines run while technicians monitor every parameter. Flight controls move through full range while engineers verify proper response. Hydraulics cycle repeatedly under pressure testing. Avionics systems power up and run through complete operational checks. Any discrepancies mean additional work before flight testing begins. The first flight represents the ultimate test of regeneration work quality. Test pilots with extensive experience on the specific aircraft type conduct initial flights. They start with basic handling, takeoff, climb, level flight, descent, landing. If basic handling checks out, subsequent flights add complexity. High speed runs verify engine performance, aggressive maneuvering tests flight control systems. Weapons system testing ensures combat capability. Every flight test follows detailed plans covering specific test points. Problems discovered during flight testing send the aircraft back for additional work. A rough running engine might need further inspection. Flight control response issues require hydraulic system examination. Avionics glitches mean additional troubleshooting and component replacement. The aircraft cycles between flight testing and groundwork until it passes every test point perfectly. Only after completing all flight tests does a regenerated aircraft receive certification for operational service. At that point, it transfers to active duty squadrons with full combat capability. Operationally, there's zero difference between a regenerated aircraft and brand new production. Both meet identical standards. Both perform identical missions. The only difference is regeneration costs a fraction of new production and happens in months instead of years. The success rate of this process validates the expertise at Davis Monthan. The 309th MARG maintains regeneration success exceeding 95%. Out of every 100 aircraft pulled from storage for regeneration, 95 or more return to operational service successfully. This reliability matters because commanders need to count on surge capacity when planning operations. A theoretical capability that only works half the time provides no real value. 95% success means regeneration represents genuine combat power, not just paper capability. The strategic implications extend beyond simple cost savings. America's stored aircraft fleet represents combat power that adversaries can't quickly counter. If conflict requires force expansion, the U.S. can field additional squadrons within months by regenerating stored aircraft. China and Russia possess no equivalent capability. Their retired aircraft don't get preserved for regeneration. When those aircraft retire, the capability disappears permanently. This asymmetry in surge capacity affects the military balance even before any conflict begins. The parts reclamation mission at Davis Monthan supports this regeneration capability. Some components needed for regeneration no longer exist in new production. The original manufacturer may have closed, production tooling may be scrapped, but stored aircraft at Davis Monthan contain these components. Regeneration teams can harvest parts from aircraft designated for reclamation to support aircraft being regenerated for service. This parts availability solves problems that would otherwise make regeneration impossible. So how does the U.S. military bring dead fighter jets back to life in 90 days? Through systematic work across every aircraft system by specialists with decades of experience. Through complete overhaul meeting the same standards as new production. Through extensive testing validating every capability before operational release through institutional knowledge refined over thousands of regeneration projects. The result is combat-ready aircraft delivered in months instead of years at a fraction of new production cost, providing surge capacity no other military possesses.